Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking about what I decided to work on for NaNoWriMo 2023 and what I decided not to work on and why it's going to repeat obviously a couple of the points from last year's video on this very same topic because again I did consider some of those projects which I decided uh, not this year like not it's not the right time yet to go back to them or to continue working on them but there will obviously be a couple of brand new points as well and I do because this is Preptober October if you're new to that concept it's what you call you know like preparing your project for like NaNoWriMo before you start writing a single word during um October I do have some future videos planned about like exactly what the project is in more detail like synopsis and stuff like that as well as you know why I decided to handwrite it for the very first time this year although obviously I could end up changing my mind at the very last moment but I'm pretty sure about what I am you know going to do and why so let's just um get started with you know the things which I eliminated now I'm not going to be continuing with the radical um rewrite and restructuring of the book formerly known as The Very Last, which is the third of the four books in my Atlantic City prequel series. It's set um, during the year of 1940. It does have a brand new and improved title. It's taken from a line in one of um, Charlie Chaplin's talking pictures, but I've been keeping it like secret for a number of years now. It's not going to be revealed until the book is finally published. Now, actually, I'm really, really happy I finally did like go back to this um, rewrite. I had put it on hiatus for a couple of months I was just you know hitting a wall like writer's block it wasn't like the right time to be like working on the rewrite but now I am back writing with it and I'm really really happy but like you might think oh why not continue like the awesome momentum through Nano when you finally got the fire burning again well it's not really that simple because unfortunately I've been you know writing this out of order and like there's so much new material to be added and like things to be like taken out plus the existing material from the chapters in the first um, and second drafts from the late um, 1990s yes I am that old and I did um, write that the first set two drafts that long ago so I have to think oh what material should I be keeping from these um, chapters and what should I be like taking out and how can I like work around and like elaborate this and I'll, I'll have to like you know write things in the middle of a paragraph so it's like really really not I mean obviously I'm not lazy I can do this I have done this many times but it's just you know a little bit um trickier and not so much in the intended spirit of NaNoWriMo when you're copying and pasting things into the master word count file like sometimes they're like in the middle of a sentence instead of just oh you copy and paste everything you did today into that master document oh, if and I do recommend this if you don't um, do it already or you didn't realize you could do it I always keep the master word count file for what I'm working on in nano as well as the actual like the specific separate you know chapter files or the files for a book or whatever so you know I'm not actually deleting anything in the master word count file even if I might very often do delete them from the like file for the actual book afterwards because like when people say oh, oh I just deleted 500 words like why would you do that yeah delete it in the, the project file itself but don't take it out of the nano master word count file because every word can so just that's just you know kind of silly and also like when a book is not 100 percent new you're like writing out of order and like you're just writing like a few like pages in a chapter you're like jumping back and forth or only this paragraph needs rewritten or you're like writing a couple of d different lines or something or you're like writing a sentence over and over again trying to get it perfect that just you know makes it uh, tricky and I, I've spoken about this uh, many times in the past in my um blog and on my um my, my youtube channel and I will be talking about that I guess again a little bit more in future possibly but it's just I realized I was like in permanent editor mode from a lockdown did it really a big number on my like head for my like writing progress and stuff like that but it was even before that I was just like way too much like you know overthinking things permanently in permanent editor mode like oh I'm writing on the computer all the time now so I can just have the luxury of oh this isn't good I'll just you know keep rewriting it or like moving it around instead of just I, I kind of lost what I did for so so many years most of my writing life oh I'm just gonna like you know write with joy and let the book write me instead of the other way around and then I'll think about you know what I might need to change like afterwards so I was just like thinking like in the permanent oh I have to edit this as I'm going along and that's just you know really was not a healthy mindset at, at all for me but I'm really really glad I you know saw the light and I'm finally starting to like you know get back to how I used to be but obviously that cannot take place um overnight and also when you are doing a rewrite it requires um slower more careful writing like obviously there are many many brand new chapters in this rewrite because it is like a radical 
rewrite so much material like I didn't realize needed to be in there and it was just like so like short and like skeletal and just very very basic and simplistic but even if you're like adding a bunch of new chapters you have to incorporate them with the existing material and just like so many complicated things that you know is really not in the spirit of NaNoWriMo and though I have thankfully like finished most of the research heavy chapters for this rewrite there are still a number of them remaining primarily the 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 rest of the New York um, City chapters for um Cinnamon's um summer vacation she went to like Long Island um the World's Fair um Coney Island and um New York City and like you know having a lot of fun going to all the museums and beaches and parks and all sorts of you know fun stuff like that you know like zoos and she's going to go to a, a baseball game um very soon but you know just when you're doing research it doesn't really work with nano because obviously like you sh you should know how to incorporate both and I obviously do at this point in my career as a historical fiction writer but like sometimes you just like go down a research rabbit hole or oh you're I have to read all this and this and this or even if it's not you know you're reading it for the first time you're reading it off of the notes you took a couple of months in advance you're thinking oh how should I incorporate this and what should I incorporate and what should I, you know, leave at it? Oh, this is just so fun reading about this and you're just not really spending as much time on your actual writing project as you should be because you're just thinking more about your research and that should just like, you know, flow so effortlessly until you know it like the back of your hand and don't need to constantly, you know, like look down at your historical notes. Well, obviously, if you don't write historical fiction, this might not apply so much to you. I guess like science fiction also if you're doing like that scientific heavy and technology stuff for your book or your fantasy worlds but obviously like some genres don't really apply to that but if you do write a genre that is very very like dependent upon like getting the details and research right that can you know like kind of distract your mind and pull you away from just you know, like writing and writing without like any interruption just like creating for the pure um joy of it and just you know it takes time away from your project when you're doing research so there's so many mistakes I have made in the past which I I hope to not do again. Now, another project which I did um consider doing when I again decided like not this time. I'm yeah, I'm really really hungry to finally get back to it and finish it, and so I can finally start the radical rewrite of that project. It's not going to be um a dream deferred. Liuba and Ivan at university, which is a fourth book with with my um Russian characters. I call them my Russian novels, even though the fourth book isn't set at all in Russia. It's like almost all the U.S. and some of the chapters are in. Canada but I decided because like the, it, it possibly may be under 50k the new material which I have to create for it the remaining like I guess 10 or so chapters including a bunch of um, new chapters to be inserted at certain points along the way which I took note of when I was I'm going through it I think it was like last year or something like that and I like was taking note of oh what should I take out what should I add in some new scenes or oh this was an important chapter to do and particularly I really like you know fluffed up I didn't realize like many universities in the late 1940s and early 1950s they were beginning like way later than they do in the modern era like in late September like sometimes even like in mid-October so that was like I got the wrong starting dates for a bunch of these schools I falsely assumed that was you know totally mea culpa but you know just, just there's so many things I have to like correct and that's again going to involve like working out of order new scenes for existing chapters moving chapters around moving scenes in the chapters around like breaking chapters where they weren't broken just like so many like confusing things and also incorporating new characters and storylines and developments with the existing material removing some storylines entirely for the future fifth book so just is that just such a you know like cluster what I don't want to have to deal with and I'm not going to work on my alternative history about um, Dante and Beatrice which I did I believe for um two um prior nanos and a couple of um camp nanos yes I'm very hungry to get back to that project as well but that again you know involves way too much research particularly because I do not know the middle ages like the back of my hand like when I'm writing about 20th century or late 19th century historical fiction or even a bit the 18th century because you know obviously I know many things about it but it's just not coming as naturally to me so I do need to take more time out to do research or look over the historical notes which I have written and that again you know kind of slows the story down just you know and you have to again choose how to incorporate historical details with the story it's not just like you know doing your research and I would be like coming back in the middle of it and therefore I you know not just the coming back in the middle and writing out of order and the research but that, that also requires me to be you know write a little bit more slowly and 
more carefully, but I am really, really eager to get back to that project. The next thing I have to do for it is do some research on how um, Carnival and Easter were celebrated in the Middle Ages, particularly in medieval Italy. The project, which I worked on for Nano 2023, was the fourth and final of the books in my Atlantic City prequel series. Its working title is still almost as an afterthought, the first six months of 1941. It does not yet have a new and improved um, title, either secret or public. And I thought this was like the perfect thing to do because I would be like starting fresh right at the beginning the original material it wasn't even like novella length it was like novelette length or even like a longer short story only 11,000 words so I thought this would be perfect particularly because almost no original material would be retained just like a few general like storylines here and there and a, a couple of you know like key episodes would be rewritten a little bit and so like I basically would and, and I did have some like finished portions of chapters which I had written for um nano Rymo, I'm um, 2020 when I was working on another of my Atlantic City um prequel books, and I realized they better belonged in other you know books, and that was basically pretty much the only material which I had that I knew would not need to be you know completely tossed out or like almost like 99% um rewritten, and I felt that came to feel that was a mistake because I was coming to it without having finished the radical rewrite of the third book. So seriously, like a lot of important developments which happened in the third book and would necessarily have informed like characters actions and like continuing storylines in the fourth book I, I just like wasn't aware of them or not 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 thinking about them all the time or I hadn't even created them yet so obviously like writing out of order also applies to writing books in a series like and it's very very difficult I got into a very you know bad habit of oh if a book is getting difficult I'll just you know write it out of order and of course you can and should do that sometimes when just nothing else is working but I really feel like look if you're just hitting a wall and it's not coming and there's you know no creative like momentum and you're not sparking joy and it's just not the same as it used to be just take a break from it for a couple of months or like even over a year if need be and work on other things in the meantime maybe try to figure out what was causing your slump in creativity but you know working out of order that can create like a very bad habits to get into but because you're not like writing through like right from the beginning to the end and so you're missing important things that happen along the way and you might be forgetting things that you know happen like for example oh there's a brand new like family in town and they're all you know best friends and stuff so like you you never had that chapter or that scene where they started meeting all these people and so like by the end it doesn't really like feel write or work well because oh these are just full-blown character characters dumped on a page and you never had the chance to actually develop them or like say like someone is like moving to a different city and you completely missed when they moved or a couple broke up or something like that and that's just like much much harder to like keep track of and do properly when you're writing out of order so again that is not something I would recommend. Instead I decided to continue working on my magnum opus Simon, which I'm so so excited I finally got back to after almost 10 years on hiatus I'm Worked on a future part from it for um, Camp um, July NaNoWriMo called um, Charlotte's Most um, Terrifying Prophecy. And that was like 99% of this book has been handwritten since I like started writing it on the 3rd of October 1993. Yes, I just marked the 30th anniversary. And yes, I really am that old and did really begin writing it when I was only... 13 years old and so I just felt like wow that's like really really awesome for my momentum I'm finally like sparking joy and I also even went I, I should mention if you haven't seen any of my pre previous videos I last left off in late October of 1998 and I just skipped ahead to September 2001 I'm glad I got that part out of the way I didn't have to dread looking forward to it because all my research and even writing about it was giving me like really like intense physical reaction so thankfully thank god I don't have to do that again like look forward to it all the time I finally got back to my um what I had left off with and um, I last worked on this sometime in um 2012 or 2013 but like the most um why I had worked on it before like before I got sidetracked and kept putting it in a hiatus was from like to well, let's see then yeah I started um, writing it on the 15th of September of 20. 10 and I guess I like worked on it for maybe like weeks or months I don't even remember at this point but I'm so happy I'm you know finally back to writing it again but I'm not going to continue doing this for the nano project obviously may I can like continue doing a little bit of it but I just feel like jumping right ahead to something that's you know brand new particularly coming fresh off the heels and momentum momentum of what I wrote for um 
camp was going to be totally, totally awesome. And as I have found out the hardware, you know, the nano brass are right when they recommend strongly starting out with a brand new project, because when you're like coming in with something you've already been working on for a long time, like a rewrite or something, you're writing like wildly out of order, just moving stuff around and just like, you know, just not coming in with like the brand new mindset of let's just create, let's go. I'm like fresh and excited. I burned up firing up for this brand new idea. It just it doesn't create the right energy and the mood and it can kind of lead you to feel like kind of a little bit, you know, self defeated unless unless of course this is a project you have been working on for quite some time without losing any momentum and you're still like as freshly excited about it as you were the very day you started writing it into existence and you have not lost you know any momentum or passion at all thank you very much for watching as i mentioned i do have a number of future videos planned for the rest of preptober about you know like why i'm writing by hand how i'm going to handle it like details about the project itself and i am really looking forward to having a some future videos about um, a pen tour. I love pens so much and I do have a couple of more in the mail on the way, like a couple of roller balls, but primarily fountain pens. Although the book, which I um, showed, I'm still writing that with a um, ballpoint because the paper is a little bit, you know, thinner, but like when I get to m more high quality paper, I'm definitely going to be using my um, fountain pens and um, refillable um, roller balls. So look forward to those videos if you're interested in that kind of thing. And I'm um, please um, leave a comment if you do NaNoWriMo, you know, tell me what you're working on or what you're thinking about working on, or if you've ever done NaNo in the past. And this is uh, the NaNo shirt, which I got the very first time I officially participated in um, 2013. I absolutely, you know, loved the dragon, you know, like who could resist a dragon? I love, you know, like medieval stuff and like mythological creatures like that. And so like leave a comment telling me what you're working on for Nano and um, see you guys in my next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye.